right, guys, what is up? And welcome to round number one of the Pro Play Tour. The first ever Pro Play Tour, and for the first ever game, round one of the Pro Play Tour, we have a heck of a little doozy here for you boys. We have Timothy Miller on the left and Eric Christensen, Bounty, insane player on the right, playing Vegeta Baby Mirror Match. Now, this is a pretty crazy match to start the Pro Play Tour off with, and if you guys have watched any of the matches from yesterday's event, Vegeta Baby doing a lot of stuff. Uh, and I also have a little special guest commentator. You might have heard of him. You might know who he is. George Machado. What are you doing, buddy? What's up, guys? Been a uh, while. Finally had some time today. Uh, super busy day yesterday. Like like you guys heard, obviously, uh, second largest Dragon Ball Super Regional um, for the national invite ever. Uh, only tra trailing uh, Core TCG's 500-person event in uh, Cali, but we don't count that. That's cheating, right? Cali, right. Cali's just too yeah, many people. Yeah, right? yeah, we can't Cali's compete insane, with that. Man. No, no, no. They are just they are insane. They have... Uh, there's a new DB card game. Yeah, there is actually, yeah. uh, Snun. Yeah, there's a, um, this is actually the Dragon Ball Super card game. It's been out for about a year, um, and it is absolutely amazing. Uh, what we'll do is we'll link, if we can, um, uh, the website for Dragon Ball Super card game. You can go check it out. It's just fantastic. How many rounds today? Six with the top eight cuts. Six with the top eight cut. Uh, pretty good attendance for the first, um, for the first Pro Play Tour. This is only a Pro Play Tour that's one day. So, um, this will not be one day in the future. Right. This is just a one day because we were hosting the regional on Saturday. Yeah. And we kind of wanted to like tease. A like, trial. Yeah, a little here, trial event. Here's a little trial. You know, lower prices, but it's only a one day event. Yeah, lower prices. Yeah. Just $2,000. Only, yeah, only, only 2000 which scrum, is the largest, st still the largest prize pool to this day for Dragon Ball Super until the national championship where we're going to be playing for $15,000. It's insane. It's insane. Minimum. You know, that's not counting like booster boxes right, and other right. stuff like it's that. Just, um, but it's it's very exciting time in Dragon Ball Super because it seems like everyone is really upping their game. Bandai's upping their game, and we're upping we're, our game uh, to continue to make this game worth playing uh, in comparison to the other top three games. Absolutely. And, and I think it uh, now it has a legitimate uh, chance and a legitimate um, reason to play this game. Absolutely. It's insane. Yeah. I mean, this game, I've always said it, but this game is a online client away from being the most popular card game on planet Earth. I mean, this, this game is insane. Uh, and like I said, there's no better place to play it than you know at Pro Play Games here at the Pro Play Tour. Two thousand dollars cash prizes is insane. I mean, that's that's enough for Gabriel Alonso to challenge you to a match. Two thousand yeah. dollars—that's a lot of money. You you win that, you can go. You can actually challenge Gabe and play him. Like, speaking like, speaking of Gabe, we have uh, Gabe and Anthony Hernandez in the same room today, <sighs> which is actually each other. This, is, yeah. <laughs> this is kind of funny. Uh, if, for those of you who don't know, Anthony uh, just temporarily suspended uh, for some miscommunication. Uh, back at an ARG, not even a Bandai event, but back at an ARG event, um, which was not even 100%, you know, it was just something that was just, caused a lot of confusion, and, uh, you know, Jim from ARG just decided to, um, you know, outright ban him from uh, Bandai Play, and obviously us as the TOs uh, went along with that and honored his decision, but because this is actually not a Bandai event, uh, and, you know, he is a legitimate player. I yeah, think absolutely. he's a legit, yeah, like, no. he's, he's not, like... By any <coughs> means, uh, a non-legitimate player. We believe he's legitimate. Anthony, one of the best players in the game. I mean, it's just I mean, still love, love him or hate him. He's yeah. still ranked number three, no matter. Um, he's banned and still ranked number uh, three. He hasn't. Yeah, he hasn't played. How long has he? I don't even know. But he hasn't played in a while, and he's still ranked number three. Nobody's been able to take that spot. Absolutely. Um, which is huge. Uh, number one being, uh, you know, number one and number two being Marcel and Danny Hype. I don't know who's fighting for it yet. I mean, I know Marcel finished just, very highly yesterday. They but both it's been a go, back and forth. They both and go to like great. every event, and I love so it's it. so tough because they they always they're like one's up, one's up, one's up. And they just keep fighting. So it's going to be decided by the national championship, which is the perfect scenario, right? That's yes. The, yeah. Uh, but Dusty, do you think the big news is an online client? Um, I don't think it's going to be an online client but i i would i will go home and pray and wish and do whatever voodoo i need to do to make sure i would if, if they announced an online client i would just take off running i would just run for three days straight no it, would, it be, would be the most exciting i would I, be so excited. i don't expect it this soon I don't but either, i know yeah. it's something that has to come and i think they are just postponing it because i think um i mean obviously everybody's working with a budget right yeah, uh, i'm sure oh, but even bandai has a budget so um they're going to I think eventually get there. They just want to solidify 
the trading card game community right Absolutely. now. Absolutely, yeah. Because I know uh, a lot of them have uh, had their issues and doubts about the game. Mm-hmm. Um, but and time client, and time again, Bandai has actually delivered. They've delivered they time have. and time again. Online client something that's very uh, positive for a game, but it can be very negative. If your first experience with the online client or with the card game is with an online buggy client, uh, it could turn you away from the game, which is a shame because this game is amazing. It's a product that you want to have uh, refined 100% before you actually um, you know, give it to the public. Absolutely. All right, so getting into the matchup, we have, uh, like I said, Vegeta Baby is a new draft box leader, uh, an amazing leader. You know, one, Actually, one of the best red leaders in the game, you know, Pan, Vegeta Baby. Uh, actually, Hercule, Hercule. I mean, yep. they're, they're, the red is getting a boost. Finally, um, yeah, because finally red was, it. before it was just like, you're playing red, all right, you're an easy win. This is like a buy, right? <laughs> but now, yeah, you have a lot of powerful effects, uh, uh, with Vegeta Baby being the most recent of the most powerful effects. Uh, very good card because it does have the ability to save, self-awaken. So um, normally in this game, you start at 8 life, right? Mm-hmm. So with the ability of Vegeta Baby, you can uh, inherently just um, lower your life totals. But by doing that, you're inherently getting advantage. So it actually works out really good. And is also very powerful against these world martial art decks because they play a lot of weenies or McNuggets. That's what we like to call them. McNuggets. That's, that's I <laughs> love it. That's what, we're, that's what I'm calling it from now on. Um, which are these uh, just small... Small power, one energy cost cards that stick on board, and they're kind of pesky because they get there and they just inherently like give you advantage and give you advantage and net you these you know pluses, and uh, and then they sit on board as a defense, right? So what Vegeta Baby is able to do is actually just take away from that defense. So little by little, you're just grinding out your opponent and taking away their defensive options, which actually makes the game. Uh, so much more intricate than what you can see because in other card games in Yu-Gi-Oh! you're just like, oh, that's a plus one. Why wouldn't it be good, right? But in this game, sometimes it's not even that relevant. But um, in this style of deck where you're consistently like stacking the negatives on it or the decreases in power, the cool thing about this game, just like Magic, Magic the Gathering, once the toughness or the power of the card goes below zero or at zero, it's actually just KO'd. Mm-hmm. So it just dies. Yeah, and, and, and similar to other games like uh, like Magic, um, even if a card's like indestructible, for example, if it goes to zero, it still dies, and that's something that's a lot different um, that you, people might not expect because that's the only effect in the game that kills indestructible cards. Yes, uh, and, and, and Dragon Ball. I is, love the mechanic. Yeah. It's, I it's do too. Been great. I, I'm glad that they're continuing to explore it. Uh, it's been fantastic. Um, also, guys, remember we are streaming on Twitch. YouTube and Facebook. We so don't know the quality of one versus the other, right, right. so uh, one of them could be completely awful. But I hope that does not ruin your experience, and you can hop right. onto another platform right. if but, anything. Yeah. So this is our first time or second right. time using it, so we're we're complete amateurs. Yeah, we we did Please get the don't internet laugh at us. Uh, fixed. It's 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 like five or six times better than yesterday. I think it's 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 absolutely flawless. Uh, it's been great. Um, but but I do want to say is that if you're leaving comments or talking to us, remember that we're trying to switch back and forth between Twitch and oh, YouTube chat. Oh yeah, that's chat. right. And we so have three yeah, different yeah, audience. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I didn't even exactly. think about it. OBS crash right there, but it, it reconnected itself. It's back up. I'm not sure what happened. I had nothing to do with the internet. That was just literally OBS crashing. So I'm not sure what that was. But like I said, I'm as I'm glad that's, uh, that you guys are enjoying the game over in Paris. Also, what does the three drop that you do? Also, by the way, guys, I'm so sorry. We're doing a terrible job actually commentating the match. Uh, it's just the first <laughs> time we've seen you guys a long time uh, together. So we're trying to catch up on the announcements and talk about the game. But the There's three a lot drop, of stuff to do. There's like some exciting there is, stuff. But, but the, the three drop uh, championship Vegeta is uh, championship pack Vegeta is actually insane. Yes. Uh, very, very good. Yeah, uh, he can attack notably a card. the best championship pack card that we have right now yeah he's actually uh it's sim- he's like essentially a cheaper jiren if you guys are familiar with that card but it's a three cost 15k when he attacks a battle card he gets plus 10,000 untaps and then he can attack again um that but he doesn't keep the 10k throughout each attack only the first attack um and he doesn't he only untaps the first time he attacks so very very powerful card and we've seen him be um extremely uh, devastating in the in the meta. Uh, ever, I mean, just it, it, he's been one of the best cards in Pan, and this Vegeta Baby Dex just gets a lot of stuff. Menars Club TCG watching from Philippines. So glad, and thank you for watching on YouTube, man. It really means a lot. Thank you so so much. Do we have any like first time viewers here? Obviously, probably we're hitting like some of uh, a new audience and on YouTube and um, maybe on Facebook. So if you're a first time viewer, let us know. Yeah, let us know, please, please, please. We love talking to you guys. Like I said, we're gonna try our best to uh, to keep track of both uh, both chats. Luckily, we have John here, uh, our stream manager, doing the life and keeping track of the hard stuff while we're just sitting here talking and, and answering questions. But uh, have it, a good old time, man. I miss this. Type, type in refresh right here. 
So anyways, uh, Baby Vegeta, um, very, very powerful because you can combine it with a lot of powerful battle cards that you actually play in this deck, such as Revenge Death Ball. Revenge Death Ball, one of the key cards uh, in almost any matchup for the deck. Um, if you're playing Baby Vegeta, this is probably one of the main reasons why uh, Revenge Death Ball, a one-costed extra card, and uh, boosts up your leader as well as dropping the power of one of your opponent's battle cards now the cool interaction about revenge death ball actually is despite your opponent comboing right because if your opponent attacks for example situation and uh you know you go no negates then your opponent starts comboing up to some absurd number like 120k or something you can actually revenge death ball before your opponent's card actually obtains that combo power that combo power is actually just lingering on the chain so uh in response to that you can play revenge death ball after their combo and actually all you have to do is like go negative on their base strength so for example base strength on the baby strength vegeta right here that timothy has on board is 20k so if he were to drop um that baby saiyan vegeta um down below 20k uh it doesn't matter what timothy's actual combo is it'll actually just ko yeah, so the card like and your combo will be gone and then m2 and then yes going, right so it's really, really powerful. It's a card that uh, when you stack it in multiples can be something that just has a, um, I want to say a Shigesh Kid Goku-esque effect. Yeah, and that's what's so great about this game is there's a lot of different angles you can take. So as a player that's playing against Vegeta Baby, you have to keep that in mind, right? You don't want to go all in on an attacker that doesn't have barrier, and you want to make sure you you know keep track of how many revenge death balls are in drop. Something that, 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 that uh, pro players do, that fantastic players like, I would say, Justin Rios, for example, uh, like to do is they'll keep track of the player's drop area, right? They're going to go through the drop area, they're going to see how many re revenge death balls that you run, and that way they know if they need to play around it or not. Um, and it's something that's really important in this matchup because you need to keep track of those revenge death balls, uh, and that way you can you know play around it. You know when to play right now. You want to go all in on attack that just gets blown out. Why don't EU have big nationals? That should be coming pretty soon, my man. How are the PPG players doing? So far, they're doing great. Um, uh, most of them have a two-round buy from playing from their results from yesterday, which is fantastic. Yeah, beautiful thing here is that you're going to be able to earn buys uh, on the two on the second day of a pro play tour. If there's a regional on the first day, you'll get a buy to the pro play tour. You'll get two buys actually. And uh, for the big pro play tours, the standalone pro play tours, the ones that you're going to play, be playing for Saturday and Sunday for a larger prize pool. Uh, those are going to be a little bit unique because we'll actually be giving buys to the top ranked players. And uh, for the top ranked players system, the first ones that are going to be in the system are actually now the, uh, the players of this event. So these are the ones that are going to be reaping the benefits of this pro play tour uh, in the long run. They're going to be considered our platinum pros and those are going to be the ones that will be entering uh, our tournaments for free. And they'll be get, uh, getting some special treatment. So um, very, very big shout out to those who have actually joined the event today and uh, hopefully do really well today. I, I mean, there's this really, really stacked field out here. There's a bunch of top teams out here. Uh, Eddie St. Hilaire is in the mix. A lot of KTM pros are in the mix. Um, local teams from Jacksonville are here. Uh, man, I forgot their name. They have like a red jersey. But one of those guys actually... Played I think got third yesterday. Yeah, <laughs> like he was, played Go Tanks and yeah. he made like top sixteen. Yeah, I think? he was wrecking. It was awesome. And yeah, and, and and it's funny because he had gotten third at Atlanta. He was playing like Hurdegar. No, no, no. Oh, he okay. was playing Hurdegar like, in Atlanta and he got like third place. Okay. So very very powerful. Yeah. Um. I think this deck plays uh, Kefla. Uh, let's double check. I don't know. I don't, I don't. think this deck does play Kefla. I don't. Maybe in the sideboard. They were asking, so maybe they saw it. Yeah. Oh, actually, no. Um. Uh. Eric, Eric runs Kefla. Eric yeah, plays Kefla, Kefla, yeah. But the, Kefla. Other, the other player does not run Kefla. It doesn't look like it. Yeah, yeah. So Kefla is really cool because uh, Kefla does allow you to draw two cards inherently, and it has uh, has dual attack. So every time you attack, you actually draw a card, which is why you draw two cards. And not only do you draw a card, it actually gives itself power. So uh, it attacks for 30k on the first swing and 35k on the second swing. So it hits very, very hard, very good at getting rid of battle cards like Vegito. Um, makes it very hard for your opponent to out combo and keep advantage because not only are you throwing multiple cards to the Vegito, but your opponent's drawing a card off the attack. So it's kind of like they're comboing and drawing. So it's m like when you think about it, 
they're not just drawing two cards. They're drawing like three, four cards. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, so I answered some uh, YouTube questions. Uh, Rose Killer eighty eight says, Dragon Ball, really interesting game. I never played, watched the stream, and a really good game. I'm so glad you like it. Who first pull eight cards, left side, lose duel? Yeah. So the, the eight cards are on the side. You can also keep track of them by the cards that are underneath the player's names and the overlay. Uh, that's your life. And so whenever you attack a player, you attack their leader, and if they get hit, they take a life. So they take a card from their from that those eight, and they put it in their hand. They can choose any of those eight cards. They can't look at them, but they can choose any to put it in their hands. And then once you run out of cards, you lose the game. Uh, so it's a, it's kind of a catch-up mechanic uh, built into your the way that you lose the game um, so uh, it's also why aggro is actually pretty hard to play in this game because every time you attack your opponent you give them a card and so you're getting you're giving them advantage as they as you kill them <coughs> and then on top of that once you get to four life you can awaken and you can flip your card over your leader card over and draw two cards some untap two but most of them un you know draw two uh, and then you, your power goes up so you become harder to kill it's actually. literally like the dragon ball super yeah anime yeah. yeah it's like yeah it's like they get they get it's like you, you know, get beat up yeah. you get tossed up a little bit you smack them up goku goes like ultra instinct and then you just lose the game because he gets just infinitely powerful so um I, that's that's one thing that i really love about this game uh being able to have that like flavor while you're playing because it kind of just plays out almost exactly like the anime would which is really really cool uh, it's a back and forth battle um as you start getting beat up you kind of reap the benefits like the, the person getting beat up reaps the benefits and then can come back and then beat you up again and then it just becomes like a very very tight-knit battle down to the death so really really cool game definitely uh it takes a lot of the best mechanics from magic uh Yu-Gi-Oh, pokemon and even some card five vanguard on there too which is really really cool so um now eric landing a foreseeing hit which is like a thought sees if if, the, if you have actually played magic before it actually grabs two battle cards from your opponent's hand and puts them in the warp for about two turns so really really good card um not only does it give you knowledge which i think that is super undervalued uh on on hit mm -hmm. the knowledge is almost more powerful than hitting cards in hand. it's Absolutely. almost more powerful uh Absolutely. just being able to know what your opponent can actually like how much power your opponent has that's kind of like putting on a scouter and just being like oh this is your power level okay i'm gonna go and over that's that something <laughs> actually we were talking about uh with, I was talking about with some people before this this game uh, this tournament started and that's the thing that there's so much design space in this game but what you have to be really careful at is printing any cards let you look at your opponent's hand because if you can look at your opponent's hand you can see exactly how much they can defend and then kill them so it's like look at your opponent's hand in this game is much more powerful than a lot of other games that you might be familiar with um answer some more questions from youtube uh we have uh what leaders have shown up the most great stream and commentary by the way thank you so much i'm glad you guys are liking the stream our commentary is pretty bad right now because terrible <laughs> yeah we're, but we're just getting into it again we're still trying to figure out the stream labs too right right and uh we're uh, trying to like juggle three different chats but i promise we'll, we'll get better we'll and get we better. have so many announcements and we're just so excited and i have george as a co-commentator we actually He's terrible, have so that doesn't help Dusty's actually awake on this one, so <laughs> it's actually like the worst. I didn't take a nap. <laughs> <clears throat> but thank you so much. Uh, and yeah, the leaders have been insane, actually. Uh, we had, what, like 20 different leaders in like so top 32 or something? There was so much variety yesterday. Yeah, My mind was blown. Like, I didn't know. Like, I couldn't tell you confidently what the best deck was yesterday. Yeah, it was, I can't yeah. tell you what the best deck is today. It's so hard, yeah. And like, I mean, there's like, I, I would say, uh, yeah, that's true. Um, I think that there is, you know, like, for, for example, what people call storm decks are you know, very powerful. Um, but you can play those like five different leaders, you know, and so to say which of those leaders are the best with Storm is almost impossible to say. Uh, and what we want you to do is, um, you know, go check out the site, see, see all the new events and stuff coming up. But more importantly, we have a poll there. So if you just scroll down to that page and the main page that, that takes you to, you can vote on what city you want to see the Pro Play Tour visit. And that's really important because not only do we want to bring, you know, the best possible event that we can to the community, we also want to take it to where people want, want to play. Um, you know, a lot of, you know, cities get overlooked and we want to definitely Definitely try to avoid that as much as we can. So please, if you can, visit the site, go down, take a couple seconds, and vote um, on where you want to see the Pro Play Tour uh, visit next. All right, guys, so we're getting into game number two here with uh, Timothy Miller versus Eric Christensen. Again, the Vegeta Baby Mirror. Very exciting. Oh, also, uh, let me, I can actually do this too. I keep forgetting. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, YouTube. I can post it here too. I'm stupid. Yeah, but you guys can visit that website as well and uh, use it to uh, go vote where you want to see the Pro Play Tour. Now, if you have voted already, we reset the poll. We added a couple new cities based on feedback. We added uh, Columbus, Ohio to the list, uh, and we added Chicago, Illinois to the list as well. So please go re-vote if you've already voted. 
and uh, we'll take care of that for you guys. Like I said, thank you so much for all the support and love. Guys, we really honestly couldn't do this without you. We have a really cool video, by the way, that we got to show you guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll definitely pro be pulling tour. that up on the stream. It's going to be well. sick. Yeah, Mill Janimba is super interesting. Honestly, that's that's what I think might kind of it has a we possibility. We tested that, yeah, yeah. yeah has that's the crazy. possibility of hurting trunks as well. I mean, any leader that draws a ridiculous amount of cards, Mill, Mill Janimba is going to be a threat. It's going to be which is cool. I, fe I feel like it just puts those uh, turbo decks in check, like the turbo draw card uh, mm -hmm. decks in check, which I think is going to shape up to a really interesting format because obviously you're going to have people on that. Then the slower decks are going to take down the Janimba decks because they just they're they're just a slow. Uh, you right. want to talk about you maybe you want to compare it to a. Um, like a mono green or a green base uh, magic deck where you're just like very slow deck but then you start casting these very powerful bombs and then your opponent really can't deal with it right and then uh, you want to compare the blue decks the turbo draw decks to the just like the the control decks of magic where you're just drawing a bunch of cards and you're just you're playing a very slow slow strategy of winning stra uh, you know but then uh, you want to compare uh, mono the, the Janemba Mill to something that's just much slower, but also just takes advantage of those control decks. So I feel like it's going to shape up to some type of a triangle format, and it's going to be really cool to see uh, what type of different decks can pop up there because I haven't been seeing a lot of people talk about Yamcha. I haven't been seeing a lot of people talk about Pilaf. Mm -hmm. I haven't been seeing a lot of people talk about Gohan. And these are all like reputable like these are all leaders that can do something in, in the next format too right. so um like vegeta baby I'm, I'm pretty sure when it came out nobody was really everybody was like krillin 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 oh my god and then baby vegeta here we see actually having a better day yeah. and better representation better success than any of these krillin decks absolutely so major uh major mayhem um yeah the two drop uh vegeta card uh that's in timothy's energy is the one it's just two drop comes into play draw a card yep that is that uh, vegeta also in youtube I really want to learn how to play this game. Can you uh, say what deck is best for beginners? Thanks. Yeah, my suggestion, if you want to get into this game, wait a couple more weeks. Uh, visit ProPlayGames.com and, and pick you up a Shinron starter deck. Oh, man, uh, that Shinron is, starter yeah, deck is so it's, good. It's a great deck, but it's a very good leader as well. And it's also a very versatile leader. And so you can try a lot of different things with Shinron. You can build a, an aggressive deck. You can build a control deck. You can build a mid-range deck. Um, and so it's very easy to um, to start with. You have all the cards. You can play, see if you like the game. And then if you do, you can add to the deck very easily. And you can yep. you know, you know know kind of tailor it to the, what the kind of deck you want to play. Um, so in my opinion, that's probably the best um, advice I can give to a starter. They can actually just grab the starter right now. We actually have everything for oh, nice. Series 5 already spoiled and on our site for the cheapest prices that you can find online. So it's really cool oh, Okay. Uh, to grab, uh, take advantage of that and grab it as soon as possible. Um, series 5 is a very exciting time for Dragon Ball Super Card Game. And we're going to be seeing a lot of cool mechanics like Wish and a lot of uh, mechanics that are really going to draw people into the game that really haven't uh, had the chance to really give the game a chance. You know, absolutely. Um, another, another question from YouTube here. Um, thoughts on the Gohan wish leader from Sam McCline. Um, no, yeah, that's what so, I was talking about. Yeah, yeah that guy's insane. Yeah, I think that you know, I think Shinron's the best wish leader. I think followed very closely behind Frieza, and then I think number three is Gohan. I think Gohan's a great yep. uh, wish leader and very, very uh, scary. Good point. Recommending waiting a few weeks for the new decks from Dragon Ball TCG guy uh, on YouTube. Uh, good point recommending waiting a few weeks for the new decks plus you can pick up the new mechanics immediately yeah it's a good point yeah you can see what the wish leaders like Gigaton, hey everyone how's it going you doing better dusty yeah here's the thing though about my cough and stuff is it gets worse as the sun goes down for some reason it's like it's like it's like i transform into, <laughs> into like a, a <laughs> like a werewolf or something like a coughing like it's, dusty yeah it's weird um so i don't know it's weird i feel you know obviously feel good uh, i'll get there i'm just gonna drink a lot of tea when i get home Thank God David Fujimara helped me uh, commentate yesterday, and, and, and um, George has helped me commentate today because two days of full commentating just destroys your throat. So the fact I can still talk today is it's a crazy. testament. crazy. I'm actually really Yeah, impressed. is a testament of how, of how well David did yesterday. So. Yeah. Kevin Casey, what's up, man? Shout out from uh, – are you from Canada? I feel like you are because you're at the Canada – Canadian Regional. So I feel like you're from Canada. Uh, Mayfay 050, uh, how do you all, from, from YouTube, how do you all feel the Sparking versus Overrun will play out? Uh, I think over, uh, Sparking, when I first saw it, it, it kind of made me mad. I was like, what a generic, stupid mechanic. Like, this is dumb. Oh, yeah, uh, I remember you saying yeah, I was so like, this stupid. is something, it's, it's, well, it just does, happens when you have stuff in the drop area. That's so, like, that's so cheesy. But the more I played with it, I realized how, how great of a mechanic it is. Uh, because what it does is it makes the player choose between Overrealm or Sparking in their deck, right? You can run either Sparking cards or Overrealm cards. And what's been great is that ever since Overrealms came out, it's been required on your deck almost, right? Like you have to play an Overrealm card, which is great, but as a, as a deck building game, you really want to be careful by, by limiting your, your opponent 
um, from or, or limiting your players to have to have certain types of cards in their deck. Sparking is an alternative to Overwhelm. So you either run Overwhelm deck or you run a Sparking deck. You can run either one, and that's great. So I love it. It also gives Wish Leaders a way to run powerful cards without... Because Wish Leaders can't run Overwhelm. Um, so they can, but it's very tricky. Uh, where Sparking is just something that allows them to be able to run you know, those types of cards. So I love it as an alternative to Overwhelm. I think it's necessary in the game. And the more I play tested, the more I've really liked it. So good question. And that's that's how I feel about sparking. Great mechanic, actually. It very, looks, very good. It yeah. looks so subtle because we're so like spoiled with overarm. Yeah, we're yeah. just like right. overarm deck, card on every deck. Yeah, and yeah. it's almost become a stable. Um, and I mean, it's okay to have stables, but like when you're now you have like so many stables, you're like sensu beans, and then you're mm -hmm. like foos, and then you're like X color, whatever color you're at. You know, every color has its a staple. You could even consider time control Kronoa maybe a staple. You can consider the new Dende and the King Piccolo as staples going into the new format too depending on how you think the format's going to shape up so um your deck becomes increasingly um smaller with options so i really feel like uh giving players the option of uh yeah this card has been insane yeah. though the west oh, uh, yeah. time kai has been in like every deck is it west supreme kai is that what it is? no it's supreme kai of time but lights kai guide time. it's not time like time. it's not like west kai of time no, or no, no, okay, no. Right. south uh, just as uh, supreme kai of time okay, this is the so. kai of time yeah. okay all right, yeah, but she's been awesome. She's she was been the most used overarm card we've seen yesterday. We've seen her all the time. We've seen her in almost every matchup. Uh, so what she does is when she you overarm her for three, when she comes into play, if you have a red or blue leader, you give that leader plus five thousand power and draw a card. It's great in pan because you draw two cards. Just a fantastic uh, card. Uh, what we've kind of started doing is is comparing a plus five k to like a card or at least a half of a card, right? And so if yes. you think of her like that, it's like she comes into play. That's a card. Like she is in play. She's a card. Uh, she gives your leader plus 5k, which is like a half of another card, and she draws you a card, which is another card. So she gives you a lot of value. And, and then it's, Pan it's gives you the plus 5k, right. so that's another half a card. So right. her and the Pan is a card, plus the Pan is another card, plus her, she's another card. Right. So it's technically three cards off one. Yeah, which is which has just been fantastic. I mean, and that's what I love is, oh, by the way, I ping Kong. Oh, wow, Thank dude. you so much for that Twitch Prime Thank sub. you, man. Really appreciate it. Get checked, Dusty. Laugh out loud. We need Peter on the name cards. Oh, we need Peter on to name the card. Yeah, uh, I know, no kidding, right? Like, he I'll, makes up his own name. He's just like, I'll, I'm gonna go. There's two. There's two players like I. I can't stand talking about card, this card game with, as far as like card names, and that's what are you talking and that's about? Peter Katani because he can't pronounce any of them. And I'm terrible. <laughs> I'm terrible at it, but he literally just can't. I never know what he's talking about. And number two is, um, uh, is is my boy. Um, oh my gosh, how am I forgetting his name? Um, David? No, not. Uh, what the crap? Because I need your place in place on the KTM team. My boy. James, no. No, the other one. The other the other half of that. I know that's your boy. Uh, the, I hate Okay. Anyway. Who? Revenge of the Fall coming out. Uh, oh, Colby. Colby, yes. Colby there Garish. Uh, he, who? he is unbelievable. Like he'll, he'll share a deck list, and it's just like four drop Vegeta that draws. One drop guy who comes into play and att attacks sometimes. And it's like, what are you talking about? Like, <laughs> these, I don't know what any of these cards are. I don't know what any of these cards do. The cards actually have names. It's actually really yeah. unique. It's at the top of the card, and um, yeah, yeah that's how we differentiate. Four negates. Which negate, Colby? Is it the? Is, is it Weiss's incursion? Is it the red negate? Like I don't know what negate you're talking about. You know, it's just like he, it's insane. It's so hard. My boy Jayco, Jayco. <coughs> Timothy going in on the machine mutants. I think this is a cyborg plan actually. The machine mutants. After looking at the deck list, I think that's something he's cyborg into. That's something cool. I mean, like. I'm a fan of putting in yeah. a package it's and actually, just it's, uh it's actually just mainboard. Yeah. It's just mainboard. Okay, I was gonna say, like I was talking to this uh blue yellow Hurigarn uh player yesterday. I was like, honestly I think that would probably be the best call for this event. Not the best deck, but best call, right? And then against Hercule, your whole fifteen card sideboard is just you transitioning into a slower deck. Okay. So that you don't get like got by Hercule, right? And then Hercule doesn't beat you in this game, you know, of just like I'll tell you, being like, M2 oh, give me all is these pretty cards. good against Hercule. Yeah, you know. Yeah, zero attack leader. Nice. <laughs> Have fun, bro. How, how are you doing? Nice zero attack doing leader. Pretty good. Yeah, if only that lasted for the turn, right? If only your leader went to zero and you just lost. <coughs> what? Turn away to well, I'm sorry. I'm, I, I don't know where. Alright guys, so Eric, 
playing out intensifying power trunks. And attacking 15,000 if he takes a life into 20,000, what it appears to be. Unless, it is 20. Yeah, so here's taking the life, going to 2. He, ne he negated the previous attack. Getting the Without any, yeah. We see the dice on there. And Timothy's going to take it himself and go to 2. So it's 2-2. Two to two. Eric to Timothy. And Eric swinging in with West Kai here. Lowering his leader back down to 15k. So it's 15k to 15k. We'll see. And Timothy's going to take it. No combo from Eric. And Timothy's taking the hit. Going to one life. See if... It's kind of deadly here. But uh, I like the decision of going to one here. Because uh, there's so many options That's to game. a double Eric strike. taking the game. Holy crap. Well, when Eric had foreseen hit, he saw that he had all. Oh, all that's the right. Games. He had the yeah. He had the insider knowledge. Yeah. So. Pretty crazy. Very very good. That's uh, pretty pretty fast little round right very there. Very intuitive by Eric. Eric uh, showing his mastery with the deck.